Hey all. Ah, Martin Modal with Modal Musical Machines here. Thought you guys might like to see a little bit of the very beginning of a project. Um, in fact, I've got two beginnings going here. Uh, this one is just a little farther along. Here's a top that's going to be one of these smaller bod body ones that uh, I call the blind dog body, whatever. At any rate, this is English walnut. And you see there's a couple of different drawings here because there's different ways of going about it. This piece was basically as large as this one to start with. This is from the same tree, believe it or not. Completely different colors and figure and everything else. This piece was just about as big. Um, but uh, as you'll see when I get to this, there's just some real puzzling out that you have to do because there's no way to get really interesting, spectacular wood like this. Um, you know, I, I actually get, I knew this tree that belonged uh, to some old family friends uh, just down the street, in fact, uh, on 10th Street here in Claremont, California. This was an English walnut. Um, and uh, at any rate, it had to come down. Uh, all things must pass. Um, and so, you know, I mean, if you look at this piece this way, and this is the bottom of the piece, and it goes like so, then you've got this interesting figure that goes off that way, or if you look at it the other way, all of a sudden you've got all that wild figure down at the bottom, and it kind of goes that way, and I think I like that best. Um, and believe me, it took me a good long time to figure that out. However, <laughs> there is an issue with it, and that's this right here, if you see that. Now, if this is, if the guitar is facing this way, you know, it goes this way and we miss that entirely. If the, this is the base of the guitar and the neck is coming off this way, then we have a little bit of, you know, it's not much, it's probably going to end up being just, just that little bit of, um, you know, filling or something along those lines. And so these are the kinds of choices that I have to make. It's not just, you know, <laughs> but, you know, this was, a, this was the product of a good probably 45 minutes of playing around and figuring out exactly how to fit. This wasn't the original cut. The thing was actually off a little this way. And so, you know, there's all kinds of fun games that you have to do. And in fact, this is exactly where the process is with, with this guy. Uh, and we're going to use... Uh, uh, this one, I want to use a larger body on this one. So these two are going to not exactly match, but uh, so here's one of the questions, you know. You open it up this way, and this is the original way that I cut this. And you see it like that. And it's also the easiest way to fit this body in here. Because, as you see, where things are most interesting, it almost always happens that way, this is where you get some checking out here. Um, areas like that. Now, the thing is, you look at it this way, and it's, it's pretty wild. I could go this way, and still see now we have the checking comes right up to there. So I have to do this. I have pretty close tolerances there on whether I can fit there or not. But here's the thing. See all of this stuff. <laughs> to me, that's where the interesting stuff is. That's where all the figure is. That's where these crazy colors are. So, what happens when you all of a sudden go, boom, and open it up this way? Now look at that. All of a sudden, there's, there's crazy stuff. So, I just was doing this and then realized, hey, maybe somebody might like to see this. But I've got a line here and a line here so that once we cut a nice, you know, line, straight line and then I'll, you know, plane it on the joiner, um, we've got this this crazy stuff going on, which could be a lot of fun, but <laughs> we uh, now it becomes a real uh, test of, of ingenuity on how to try to get all of this and miss, you know, the checking. And what it turns out is there's going to be one here that I can't miss. These are wormholes, things like that. I just don't mind that kind of thing. 
I can either fill it with clear or I can use some dust from this and fill it, you know, and it doesn't bother me. I'm not going to try to disguise it because, you know, my philosophy all along here with these things are that, you know, not only was the tree a living thing, but it was an ecosystem. There were things that lived within the tree and did all their thing in there as well. But all of a sudden now, you see, this one here, that's a check and that's a check that I can miss. I can get this pretty darn close to there, but there's no way I can miss this one and fit this in. Now you'll also see right here, whoops, okay, that's an issue. Except that, um, maybe, maybe uh, I'll be able to fit that because remember this is where a neck pocket is going to go and it's two inches wide or is it an inch and a half? It's inch and a half wide. Inch and a half wide by two inches deep at this point. So an inch and a half wide is gonna go, oh God, it's so close, <laughs> see? And this is where, uh, so into three quarters of an inch. Yeah, it is, it is barely gonna make it. Because it would go out to here, and then that goes out to there, and literally that just... So, it could be done. It's very close. It's very close. Because remember, you know, uh, I've lined this up as close as I can, but then once this, you know, these... these uh, I'll cut this on the bandsaw. Once that's done nice and straight, oh, wait a minute, you know what? Maybe I'll do it on the radial arm saw, and then I'll get a nice, real clean line it'll be perfectly straight and I won't have to plane it and I'll lose less of the wood. So yeah, I've got a, sl a sled over here for the radial arm saw. I'll basically just clamp these down on my sled, line up the, the line with the saw and just go and that'll be done and basically planed in one pass while cutting as little of the wood off as I can so that because of that tolerance, right? That can't be any wider than an inch and a half. Uh, and so, if I do this, let's just, let's just do a little line here, and see. Okay, I think I want to do this in pencil, hopefully you'll be able to see it. <clears throat> I'll do a final line in pen, because I may change this, I may go a different direction. There may be all kinds of things, but let's just see, basically, what we get if we do this. I'm basically doing this half of it. Um, and this is, you know, again, approximate. So, we get this figure is going to be included in it. And all of this, this is going to kind of wrap around the bottom of the body. And we have this stuff going in, and then it kind of reaches out towards the top there. And I think that's going to be, that's going to be really interesting. This is, I think, the best use of, you know, the figure that's on here, the way it flows with, um, you know, plus the grain also flows that way too. It's not just figure. This isn't just, you know, figure. This is actually the way the grain of the wood is going, you know, and the colors are basically from, uh, you know, moisture and, um, you know, some, some possible, you know, either bacteria or fungal infection that killed the tree and that's where you end up with some of these colors. But I mean look at this, we've got salmons and oranges and reds and then it goes off into this almost gray color here too. We've got stuff down here which would be really nice to be able to use but there are really large checks. This is like a really big one. And it's just a, you know, structurally it's, it's an issue. You know, the, the wormholes and things like that, they're not cracks. They're not going to affect how the thing actually vibrates. And plus, it's got that organic look, whereas a, a check, a crack in it, actually is broken, um, you know, uh, fibers in the wood. And so it's just, it's not the same thing. So, but even so, in doing this, uh, it looks like I missed this. And... But there is one check, there's one, well, no, there's, I can miss this one too, but I can't miss this. Going this direction, 
this crack, and it's a smaller one, but it's there. I can't miss that. So the question then is, can I live with that? I mean, I can certainly fill it and stabilize it with, uh, you know, epoxy. I can color the epoxy to kind of match, like, these dark streaks here. And I don't think it would uh, detract from its look. Um, but the question is, how deep is it? You know, uh, and it looks like it doesn't actually even go all the way through. Well, maybe it does. So, you know, it also then depends on, you know, is this a solid body? Is this a, um, you know, semi-hollow body? And in fact, that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing here is, is another one of the jazz box type guitars like Harlequin. Um, in fact, what I'm trying to do is, is essentially do the, this one would be like the, you know, almost pure hollow body. And then this one over here that I showed you at the beginning is going to be more of the, um, you know, semi-hollow to more like chambered type. You know, closer to solo, solid than hollow. And this is closer to hollow than solid. <laughs> right? That's why they call it semi-hollow body. Anyway, so there we are. I'm not done yet. We'll do another little installment. Um, because the thing is, then we start thinking in terms of things like, well, what if I... You know, move this this way, and then I make the same cut over there, so we still get that book match. Um, you know, I'm not really gaining anything that way. But if I go this way, can I miss that? You know, what if I actually do end up having to do it this way instead? But in order to try to include things like that, we move things in like so. So essentially. In fact, that's kind of what I was just looking at before I decided to go ahead and film a little of this, because if we move this in here to, as close as we can, then we've got a check here and a check there, right? But if I can fit that just inside, where would that be? That would be on, that would still be on the board, so I can actually fit that there. And then what if I swung this, whoops, now see we're on the end of the board, so... You know, and this is this is the game I get to play with pretty much, well, a good portion of them. And sometimes the really sad thing is, there's just a crack, some, you know, and there's no way to get it in there to get the best figure. I'm thinking it's possible I may have to go this way, something like that, and then make a similar cut so I still end up, you know, book matching. At any rate, stage one of this game, I'll probably play around with this for another good half an hour to maybe even a full hour just trying to figure out how to use this piece of wood best. What's it going to look like best artistically? Is it going to work at all? Because there are some, there are some issues uh, on this. Um, some things I can include, some things I can't, but that's the kind of decision-making process that happens at the very beginning of a guitar, which I think is really fun, because it's all potential, you know, um, and a lot of times the wood is going to dictate what it can be. I may not be able to do this guitar on this. I might be able to fit, um, you know, this other one here better. Uh, I also have uh, the option of doing a double cutaway. And there are a couple of times when I've done that because there was no way to fit. This is the thing that killed it, right? On this particular guitar, see, like, for example, I can get up to there, but I can't do that there. And that would get me by all of these checks. So what if I did that? Maybe that's what happens on this guitar. What if I did that? So here, here's that deepest check there. If I go like that, I can fit this in there. I can certainly double cut away, but I can't do that. So maybe, maybe that's the best way to go. I sure do wish that these checks weren't there, because I'd like to I'd like to include all of that if I could. <laughs> Alright you guys, see, you know, if I keep if I don't turn that thing off, we're gonna be here for another god knows how long. Alright. See y'all later. Have fun.